To hear San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner tell it, the city's potholes, some of the worst around, are on their way out, and fairness for all communities is on its way in. The mayor joins us now for his monthly check-in. Mayor, welcome. Yeah, they're great to see you again. Good to see you too. The new fiscal year starts tomorrow. I understand that there's money in this $3 billion budget to fix potholes, to increase fire protection, yeah. public safety, extend library hours, start after school programs. How soon might San Diegans see the effects of this increased funding? Well, the good news is they're going to see it right away. Um, fiscal year starts. You're going to see four more hours in branch libraries starting in July. Uh, we're hiring the folks to do the new and revamped pothole program to take. Uh, better care of our city streets, not just the potholes, but you know, making sure that we're doing the asphalt overlay, uh, more money for sidewalks, street lights, increasing police and fire academies. Those are going to start at the next academy. So a lot of good news, and the good news is that it starts quickly. Mayor, you recently made a video in which you said that you wanted to ensure that all of San Diego's yeah. communities were treated fairly. As you know, San Diegans earlier this month defeated Props B and C, which would have separated industrial businesses from residential areas in Barrio Logan. What does fairness look like for you to those people who live in Barrio Logan and think that those measures were a good idea? Fairness is extremely important. And my one San Diego plan talks about just that, which is providing neighborhood services, particularly to communities meet that, that hadn't gotten their fair share before. So when we look like, for example, the work we're doing uh, in City Heights on the new park that we're partnering with, with my colleague, uh, council member Marty Emerald, making sure that we're putting our city services there in communities that hadn't got their fair share. When we look at Barrio Logan uh, as well as to make sure that we have the ability to pass a community plan that not only provides the protections that Barrio Logan's neighbors deserve, but also provides the protections to making sure that our ship repair businesses and those businesses there keep operating because they provided great jobs for literally generations of San Diegans. How do you balance the two? You hit it right on the head. It has to be a balance. Um, and I'm actually confident that we can come together to get a solution that works, that does strike that right balance. It's important that the Barrio Logan Community Plan is updated. <clears throat> it's also important that we're keeping those good quality jobs on the working waterfront that so many hardworking San Diegan families depend on. Moving on to the minimum wage, City Council President Todd Gloria now backs a more modest increase of $11.50 per hour instead of $13 per hour. I understand that you don't support that increase. What does a fair increase look like to you? Well, I support, the, for example, the, the work that's going on the federal level to make sure that we increase minimum wage. I've been very strongly supportive of that. The minimum wage is going up in California. It's increasing from 8 to 9 and then to $10. And the questions for us in San Diegans is should we have an increase on top of that? And my concern has always been that I don't want to put San Diego at a competitive disadvantage, particularly when it comes to other cities in the region. We're doing all that we can to making sure that we're creating good opportunities for businesses, not only to expand, but also to start here in San Diego, particularly after we're coming out of one of the worst recessions in our country's history. So I want to make sure that we have a level playing field and that San Diego remains competitive. And that's how I'm going to continue to view this. And you don't have a dollar figure for that? I don't. As I said before, the, you know, the state is increasing the minimum wage. Uh, and I think that that's important that we have a level playing field that San Diegans can depend on, that workers can depend on. Now, of the 8,500 veterans, um, actually of the 8,500 homeless people in San Diego County, 17 percent of them are veterans. Yeah. You were recently selected to be part of a White House initiative right. to, to bring an end to homelessness among veterans. What are some of the solutions? Well, it's really, an, and I was proud to do that, and it was by First Lady Michelle Obama, and it's really, it's, it's the mayor's challenge uh, that they're doing in other cities across the country. And, and I think the recognition is, and one that I support, it can't be just a top-down approach from Washington, D.C., but what are cities doing across the country that mayors have been involved with that we can help be part of that solution? And so we're looking at, you know, all of the programs that we do do that works. It's, it's all about permanent supportive housing. It's by looking at the great work, as example, the Veterans Village does in San Diego, to try to look at these local models that work, to see how we can replicate them with the absolute goal being to end veterans homeless 
for the men and women that have served our country uh, you know, so well over these last decades, really. Very quickly now, I understand that there might be a compromise plan when it comes to linkage fees and affordable housing. What do you know about that? I think there can be, because uh, we've had a lot of great discussions, and, and it's really getting to balance, the balance to ensure that we have not only dollars for affordable housing, uh, but also that we're improving our economy, and, and I think we have the ability to come together on that really quickly. And we've got to end it there. Mayor Faulkner, thanks so much great for coming on the again, program. Again. Thank you.